Hello children, first of all congratulations to all of you that you all have reached the 9th standard. I welcome you all to the session 2020-21. Now children, now onwards you are going to start a new journey of your studenthood. As you have reached the 9th standard, you will be called senior students. Senior students means being more responsible, responsible towards your studies and as well as your behavior. So I wish you good luck and I believe that you all are going to prove to be good students and of course responsible students. So keeping your studies in mind, we have planned some video classes for you all. So I am Priyanka Joshi and I am going to take your bio classes. So, when we talk about your syllabus, I know that most of you don't have your textbooks. So, first chapter given in your books is basic biology, which is only given for the introductory purpose. Whenever you will have your textbooks, you can go through that chapter, you can read that chapter. We will start from the second chapter that is the cell unit of life. So, when we say unit of life, it means that every living being starts their life with one single cell. So when we talk about cell, the question arises, what is a cell? The biology is a subject in which we study about the living beings. Living beings means starting from the microorganisms going to the higher organisms and they all show different activities, different behavior. But the similarity among them is the basic feature cell that they all are made up of cells. So the definition of cell is the cell is a fundamental structural and functional unit of all living beings. Cells are so tiny and small that we cannot see them through our naked eyes. They are absolutely microscopic. So time and now the scientists they have discovered the shape of the cell for that they have first of all discovered the magnifying units that is known as microscope. So the first scientist came into being was Anthony von Leeuwenhoek who made the first microscope which is named as simple microscope. There he used only one lens which was a biconvex lens which has a very little magnifying power. Later on came Robert Hooke who uh, modified the simple microscope and came into being the compound microscope because there he has used the two lenses. So the compound microscope which Robert Hooke made, he saw cork under the microscope. Cork are the dead cells of the tree. There he was able to see the dead cells where only compartment like structure he was able to see and he called them boxes. And these from there the name came cell. After Robert Hooke's microscope, many improvements were done in that compound microscope and then came into being the latest compound microscope which we use these days in the laboratories. Later on more discoveries were done and electron microscope was discovered which has a magnifying power 2000 times better than the compound microscope. And then the scientists were able to see the cell under the electron microscope and they were able to see the cell inside. Three scientists proposed the cell theory. The scientists were Matthias Sheldon, Theodor Schwann and Rodolphe Virchow. The cell theory states three major points. The cell is the smallest unit of structure of all living things. The cell is the unit of function of all living things. All cells arise from pre-existing cells. So to understand the cell theory, the first point is the cell is the structural unit. If we take an example of a frog and an example of a mango tree and we would like to see any part of these under the microscope, we will find that the cells are the basic unit and cells together have formed that particular structure. So we say that the cell is a structural unit. Second is the cell is a functional unit. Again if we take an example of a frog and a mango tree, 
whatever activities are coming out from these two are the action of the activities of the cell. For example, if a frog wants to jump, that means all the cells together of its, its leg are going to function together and thus it is going to jump. Now the third point of the cell theory is that the new cells arise from the pre-existing cell and the example of this is growth. We all know that when we come into our mother's womb we are just one single cell and then this cell keeps dividing and redividing and thus we grow and came into being like a baby. So the new cells are added to it that means the new cells were given out from the pre-existing old cells. So this was the cell theory. Now the question arises that how many cells do the living beings have in their body? For that you just have to remember one thing, larger the organism more the number of cells in the body. So if we see an example we have three categories. The first is the single celled animals, second category is few celled organisms and third is multicellular organisms. If we take an example of single celled animal, we know amoeba and paramecium are microorganisms or we call them unicellular organism. Few celled organisms example is algae and we can take the example of a small animal like we can say rat. Then the multicellular organisms are the organisms like human beings, elephant, whale, they all have a larger quantity of cells. Now the question arises that how small the cells are. So in the beginning itself I told you that the cells are very very small and they are microscopic. We cannot see them through our naked eyes. But we can categorize them into a smallest cell, the largest cell and the longest cell. So to talk about the smallest cell, the bacteria are the smallest cell. And when we talk about human beings, the RBCs which are present in our body, which we are called uh, them red blood cells, they are the smallest cell in our body. The longest cell is the nerve cell. You can imagine a nerve cell starting from your finger, going to the spinal cord and to your brain. So that is the longest cell present in our body. Then comes the largest cell. The bird's egg is the largest cell present on the earth. And when we talk about egg, ostrich's egg is the largest cell present on earth. Now we come to the shape of the cell. In our body, according to the requirement of the function, the cells have different shape. They could be cuboidal, they could be rectangular, they could be polygonal. So this we will understand with the help of the pictures. White blood cells are amoeboid in shape so that they can squeeze out through the capillary walls. Nerve cells are long to conduct impulses from distant parts of the body to the brain and vice versa. Muscle cells are long and contractile to pull or squeeze the parts. Guard cells or stomatal pore in the leaves are bean shaped to open and close the pore. So these are the few examples of shape of the cells. So children in this video we have covered the topic what is cell, then we have studied the invention of microscopes, then we have studied about the cell theory. Then we have seen that how numerous the cells are, then we have studied the smallness of cell and at the end the different shapes of the cell according to the requirement of the function. Now I expect from you to make some notes out of these and of course at the end I will be giving you a very small worksheet so that you can revise the topics. Stay safe and happy.